So the primary issue around bowel management is to try and identify how we can best help the patient. And what we've tried to do is to produce a system where we can help patients understand what it is they're trying to get better with. So we undertook something called a consensus review to look at bowel management as a whole, but in particular to look at transanal irrigation. And bowel management as a whole is a really big issue for patients with neurogenic bowel dysfunction. Now, who are these patients? These are patients who have multiple sclerosis, spinal cord injury, Parkinson's disease, patients following strokes, any number of nerve conditions where we know that up to three quarters of these patients can get problems with constipation, but also get problems with bowel control where they can't hold on to their motions. And sometimes, and very often, these things coexist. The treatments we use for constipation make bowel control worse. The treatments to control bowels make constipation worse. So we identify those patients and we must look for them carefully because they may be suffering in silence. But there's another group who also suffer with bowel symptoms and those are the so-called idiopathic, uh, idiopathic constipation or idiopathic incontinence, patients who have problems with bowel function for no neurological reason. And these patients often, again, get undermanaged and get given generic advice. So the idea of the consensus review, which is a group of experts from around Europe working together to review all the literature that there was, was to see whether we could come up with some sort of consensus to help colleagues and above all patients to know exactly what steps of management there were available. And so essentially what we generated was kind of a pyramid or really better considered as a menu of care. And what that consists of basically is a sequence of steps of care which people can use whichever step is appropriate for them. Like any menu, you begin at the start and you choose which bits you want and you finish when you are satisfied. So how do we know when you're satisfied? This is a really critical issue and for me, it comes to making sure that the patient has defined what they want. When we start any step of bowel care, the patient will say, or we should ask them at least, what is it you're trying to achieve? Is it you're trying to achieve greater independence? Are you trying to achieve avoiding infections? Are you trying to achieve freedom from being able to leave the house more easily. And at the end of that in in initiative we've made, after that giving it a month or six weeks or whatever it is, we then need to assess the patient to say, have we made that better? And if we have, we carry on. And if we haven't, we then choose to add something or change whatever it is we're doing. So what are the steps of care? The steps of care are begin with a conservative approach where we look at lifestyle factors, fluid intake, timing of meals as much as the actual meals themselves and trying to simplify the medical uh, regime there on in terms of other drugs which may be confounding things so that we got that as simple as possible. Beyond that, some patients may need laxatives to help their bowel work or antidiarrheals if it's the other way. And when those conservative approaches fail, we then need to consider the more, um, the more interventional steps, of which one of which is transanal irrigation. This is a catheter-based system attached to a reservoir and hand pump which the patients can control to allow their bowel to function. And when we do that, the patients can then achieve better bowel outcomes. And if that fails, then we move up the ladder of care towards the more intrusive options, sometimes even surgical. So we try to assess, therefore, the patients who need help by asking what it is they want to achieve. But what else can we do as practitioners to find out whether our patients are happy? I think there are three key metrics that we can look at. One of them is about how long the patients spend in the toilet. We know that sometimes patients spend hours and hours daily on bowel function. And that's something which sometimes patients don't like talking about, but we need to ask about that. And if we can try and improve that so it's more like half an hour every other day, then we know we're succeeding. The other big metric for patients is avoiding bowel incontinence. That's a huge issue, as you can imagine. And the third thing, which is related to both of those, of course, is independence and quality of life. Being able to manage oneself on one's own, being able to socialize, being able to eat one, what one wants, being able to uh, leave the house, all those factors are really key things that we can aim to, to help with. And if we haven't achieved all of those steps and made the patient happy, we need to then think whether we can fine tune bowel care better. So essentially the message is that there is a pathway of care, we can choose which bits of the pathway our patients need, and importantly decide at the start what outcomes are we trying to improve. And at the end of our intervention, at each step, say, have we improved it sufficiently? Yes, let's keep on with that. No, let's add something or change something.